Well, welcome to another edition of the Live to Be Member podcast. Hold on, we got the book coming in. He's going to have a talk about it. Him and LeBron James. We'll get up out of here with that. Uh, but anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Live to Be Member podcast. Got the squad with me. What's going on, fellas? What's happening? What's going on? Dude. Hey, what's going on? Come on, you say anything? Is he on it? Is he on it? Oh, he on. We are the champions. <laughs> we are the champions oh. of the world. You got to mute him. Somebody mute him, please. Mm. Love. <laughs> I bet they won't go back to back. Yeah, they will. They oh. won't go back to back. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Can Steph we... Curry, them boys back, bro. Steph Curry, yo. Steph, Steph Curry, all them boys back. They reloaded. Man, they're going to go back to back. That's uh, a can, 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 we, can we enjoy this one? Nah. Oh, yeah, y'all can enjoy it. <laughs> they, enjoy they, it. Please they do. They said we were not going to win it. I mean, it wasn't they a full we season, but I mean, you got a win is a win, though. You know, it wasn't a full season. Ain't nobody traveling. Ain't nobody traveling nowhere. Ain't nobody yeah, going from L.A. Play. to Miami. You know. So I mean, you in one location? That's and, like you know, we made the college day days. It's still, it's still basketball. You got to put the ball in the. Hey, like the great, you do. like the great man from Bedford once said, basketball is easy. All you got to do is put the ball in the hole. That's it. Man, there you go. Pause. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> in, 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 in his words. In his words. King James, baby. No, man, listen. So, I, I, so are we saying that LeBron is better than? Michael Jordan, is that what we say? Hey, hold, hey, hey! First of all, y'all gotta stop doing that. Uh, they uh, both, they both can be great. Yeah, but only one can be the goat. Mm. Yeah, see, LeBron James is the king, Kobe is the Mamba, and Jordan is the goat. That's I like that. I like that. All right. Everybody got their own lane. Everybody but got their own lane. You don't gotta, you don't gotta debate that no more. You. We can have we can have three great people, uh, but it only only one's the goat. That's it, and there can't be no comparison between Michael Jordan or LeBron James ever. ever. It can be. It can be. I'm gonna tell you what set those two apart between Jordan and, uh, and LeBron. Jordan knew when to shave his head. LeBron <laughs> won't do it. Hey, no, I'm rocking with LeBron because I, I, I ain't shaved my head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but but hey, but real quick, I got I got to say this. For the ones that keep hating on the the ones that bash Bron and yeah. I'm talking to my to my African American people, the ones that bash Bron, y'all are no better than the woman that told him to shut up and dribble. Mm. Mm. Oh. Man. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, this is what birthday uh birthday vacations do, huh? Yeah, yeah. he, he come back strong. He come back strong. Oh, bro, listen, I can't even argue. Bump that, yeah. LeBron. Oh, now I can't even say yeah. nothing. Okay. He done left all the Jay Z quotes. He didn't turn to somebody new. <laughs> hey, hey, Quan, man, how was your birthday, bro? It was good. Uh, the Braves won, so that was good. Then we uh, I ain't, I ain't do nothing. Uh, I watched baseball. Uh, went out to eat. That was it. That's dope. What's up, man? Yeah, we missed you though, bro. No homo. Yeah, missed you, fam. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, man. Two two men can be. They can be uh, vulnerable yeah. and, and then not be. You know. Yeah. I don't want to say the word because it ain't yeah. politically correct, but. But you on the line though, so we know how you get, man. So that's why I had to throw it. Fast. <laughs> Cause he quick yeah. to point out real he quick. He'll, he'll, he'll point pow, out, pow. Yeah. Pow, nah, y'all, pow. y'all just gotta slow down. That's all. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, yeah. welcome back, fam. Uh, appreciate you. Let's get this podcast rolling, Willie. Yes, sir. Talk about it, man. Let's go. My, my talk about it, man. All, all seriously. Um, for, for us, for, for the married man, or just for anybody, is it okay? Is it okay for a married man? To have female friends. Oh damn! Mm. All right, yeah. so like we talking talk about, about it. let's talk about talking, it. like female friends, 
that you talk to on a regular basis or yo we've been friends for a while like we was friends before me and you but we don't really talk like that it's just when we see each other <laughs> like what you want you got about... <laughs> I mean I mean just you know like like female just female friends I ain't I ain't talking about you know I'm just saying female friends in general if it's somebody you knew before somebody after during is it okay uh, well, I, I, the reason I asked is because I have a female best friend that me and her, we've been friends since middle school. Um, mm-hmm. But we only talk when we see each other. Like, we don't really, I don't take, I don't have her phone number. She don't got my phone. Then we friends on Snapchat. That's it. Mm-hmm. But, and then on Facebook and Instagram, that's it. But far as like texting, she don't have my number. And we only talk when we see each other and she know, she know my brother, she know, uh, she know my wife, she know my kids, so. Okay. So, and, so, so, and so she's a godparent. She's a godparent. <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> you trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, say, so, Willie, I guess this question, the question one, I don't think it'd be so much for the men because obviously the men don't have an issue having female friends. I think it would be more for the wives. Come that on, you have to ask this question. I don't want to know their answer. <laughs> right. Because if it was up to them, we wouldn't be on this call. <laughs> at yeah. all. Right? Yeah, at all. Point because bank, that, period. We can't do that, nothing. That, nope. Anything no. got to do with fun. Stopping it now. <laughs> it, yeah, I think it depends, man. I think it depends. Like, personally speaking, um, gosh, dude, this is a question. Uh-huh. I don't, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, fuck that, dog. I, I go, man. Bro, listen, man, I got four female best friends, bro. I don't care what anybody say. At the end of the day, if you insecure about yourself or you don't trust me, that's on you, period. Now, I am lying because I will tell you. <laughs> behind, bro. I promise. I ain't got none. None at all. Um, okay. My wife okay. Is, I was about to say, oh, Lord, what nah, Paris said? Because she about to kill nothing. all of us. Paris would have hit me with a chocolate, bro. But I Man, promise, she would have get all of us. I ain't got none. Um, and I keep it that way. We both like that. You know what I'm saying? I just feel that, you know, women or men, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> are, are conniving sometimes. And sometimes they mm. take things over a little bit too much. So, you know, they end up turning high into texting you late at night and late at night to, nah, I can't. For me, no, no go. No. Okay, yeah. cause see, I was gonna follow up with you. I think I'm gonna do what Mark Trey did and fade to black. Um, <laughs> 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 y'all see, it? y'all see, y'all see that But no, but no, bro got a, uh, bro got a. Um, I wouldn't. She ain't his best friend, but he got a. Dang, uh, Quan. Th- thank what? you, Mark Trey. Thank you. Th- nah, thank he you. got a. He got a female. I mean, he got. His, I mean, he is right here. We can. We can. Nah, because I know him. him. He ain't gonna say nothing. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. He's, hey, he's not, man. He's not gonna say anything. Shout out to uh, Sarah Hunt, the whitest girl you will ever meet. That's my dog. <laughs> like, it was funny. Like growing up in school, like black girls used to get mad that I hung out with this girl. Like, that's my dog, for real, for real. Like, she helped me get through so much. Like, but nah. At the end of the day, if if you got a question that, like, if that's an actual question when you generally got a friendship, like, I don't even want to be in that type of relationship. If you got a question that, like, what's the point? If you got to do all that, then why are we even together if you can't trust that I got a, a friend that, when you, if she a friend, then if I really want to be with her, I'll be with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it was on that type of time. But being that we are <clears throat> friends for so long, you got to respect that at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think anybody that's trying to deny you of having uh, access to the opposite sex because you're in a relationship, that's a toxic relationship. Mm. My personal opinion, because it's like, just because I got what you don't mean, I have to stop living. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't change anything. The only thing that changes is my faithfulness to you. But if you got with me, knowing that I, you know what I'm saying, I had these friends, then what about what I did made you switch up and say, you can't have any? It shows me a couple of things. One, you're insecure. Two, there's something within you that no, I'm, I'm being real. There's something no, within yourself. You're right. You're right, bro. That 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 you really need to uh, work on, because you you're not my you, you know you're not my superior or authority you know authoritative figure. You're my equal counterpart. 
So ain't no way in hell you're going to tell me what I can and cannot have. Now, if you feel uncomfortable about some situation, most definitely speak on it. But I should be man enough not to put you in an uncomfortable situation with one of my female friends. All right. You have it. But don't get it twisted. There are some people who, who fake the funk, and that ain't no real friendship. Y'all and y'all and mm. mingled a little bit before. And yeah, I was I was just I mean, about to say <laughs> I, was, I was about to say uh the man we gotta phone a woman on this one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I told yeah. you. Because yeah. Christian yeah. Mingo was what if it's Christian Mingo that y'all met on? I mean. Yo, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Start the podcast. Start the podcast. What's the topic? What's the topic? Nah, What's the topic? I, I was, I was gonna say, uh, typically, typically, I don't want to speak for a woman, but some women would say the one you tell me not to worry about is the one I need to be worried about. So, no, nah, but it's the but women and men do that. Let y'all get into an argument and she know and he know about it or she know about it. They be like, oh, he did what? He trying mm -hmm. to cover it. Like, he did what? Like, man, <laughs> and he ain't lying. That's a fact. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah, don't, don't text my girl and ask her, he did what? No evidence. <laughs> <laughs> then, you got a problem. Yeah, those, those be fighting words, boss. Hey, on a good about the, gun line, okay. the Steelers are undefeated. Well, I well, well, about that, we bro. five and know if the Titans ain't run from this smoke. They ain't had no COVID. They ran from this smoke. But it's all right. We're going to get to that later. Let's go. We're going to get to that later. Let's go. <clears throat> so uh, I, I, I'm assuming that the topic is how to get through bad times. Right? Mm. Yes. Yeah, uh, how bad, how troubled times help you identify changes you need to make within yourself. All right, L O Cool J, spit it. Hey, love, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that's the topic. You know how trouble times help you identify the change you need to make within. And um, I don't know who want to kick us off, but that's the topic. Shit, I'll kick it off. I've had yeah. a horrible week. I'm be honest with y'all. This week has been basuda. Um, I probably reached out to more men than I reached out in my ever lifetime, bro. And I'm only being honest, man, because a lot of people are, are you know. Uh, have this social media funk where, you know, I'm good, I'm blessed. No, you need a damn therapist. That's what you need. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop trying to walk through this life wearing a mask like every day's Halloween, bro. You need to take that off. You know what I'm saying? You need to take your own mask off and you need to go get some help because you have a virus and it's called depression and stress and it's killing you, bro. And uh, for me, bro, I felt so good this week uh, talking to Corey. Felt so good this week talking to my man Manny and I know Willie hit me up and you know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of things that I don't talk about that I need to talk about and get off my chest, man. And you know, for everybody who's listening to this, man, stop walking around like your life is perfect. Stop walking around like you ain't dealing with nothing. You know what I'm saying? Cause if you look at Robin Williams, that's what depression looks like. Smiling and killing yourself on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, suicide is real. The thoughts are real. You know, uh, pain and heartaches are real. And I'm telling you, you, you may feel that you're the only one that is going through it, but you're not. And that's why it's so important to reach out to other men who you can trust and be like, yo, bro, I just felt like giving up. I told Corey a couple, couple of hours ago, I like, bro, I promise you, bro, I'm dead ass serious. Bump entrepreneurship, <laughs> done with it. I don't care about no entrepreneurship. I care about the sanity of my family. I care about having my right mind. I ain't trying to be on this funk and try to be something that I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Um, wherever the chips may lay for God, what God has, that's what God has. But as far as right now, I'm like, yo, like, bro, what's good? <laughs> you feel me, fam? I'm like, yo, what's good? Like, is it, is, it, is it bad to say this to you? But I feel that drug dealers have better life than those who are serving. It's crazy. How come a drug dealer gets to get on a plane and go do that? And yeah, it may be on, it may be on sand, but that saying do look good. And sometimes you start contemplating in your own self, like, come on, man. Like, I've been serving you. Me, I'm, I'm a baby, so I consider myself eight years old in the kingdom of God. But it's like, yo, like, God, I need help bad. Because I, if this is the case, I might as well not even serve you, bro. I might as well go about my life and find something else. I'm just being real. I'm just speaking because somebody needs this. Because somebody who's listening to this is like, yo, you know what? I can relate with that. And I'm glad you can. 
because you don't become a man by suppressing things. You become a man by letting go of things. And that's how you become stronger as an individual. Stop trying to keep up with the funk, bump social media, bump business. If your mind ain't right, your grind ain't going to be right. Point blank and period. You need to take care of you. So I just need to say that, get that off my chest. I've had a hell of a week. Um, and I thank God for my brothers who have helped me to navigate through it because I feel better. I feel better. I feel like I got all this gunk out and I got to go to the mirror like I told Corey. I said, I got to go to the mirror and say, Will, stop being a dumbass. Like for real, like look at yourself in the mirror. What is it that you need to do? It ain't about your wife. It ain't about your kids. It ain't about your baby mother. It's like, what are you doing? And what's going to make you better as an individual? What is it that you're not doing? And so many times, you know the saying, when you point one thing, you got three pointing back at you. You have to examine you at the end of the day. So yeah, man, I just had to get that off my chest real quick. I feel good. I feel well, no. Nah, let me say. Let me say this. I don't feel good. I feel better. Mm. I'm fine if I said I feel better, but I know somebody needs this. So yeah, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. Let's go. Let's go. That's that's good, bro. That's good, man. Um, for me, I think getting through terrible times and, and everybody terrible times is different. Um, I know my terrible times, I think adversity really, you know, comes to find out really who you are because people respond differently in times of, of, of situations. Like, you know, you can, if you don't realize the situation and say, man, not blame yourself, but to just analyze what happened. Like what is what is causing the pain? What is causing me to feel like this week is terrible? Like what is it? And that's what you did. You analyzed to say, hey, before I used to suppress it. Now I have built myself to where I can talk to people now. So if you never analyzed it the first time, you would have reverted back to doing the same stuff that you've been doing that got no results, which was being mad at everybody else, acting out, doing what you wanted to do, and that would have got you pretty much back to where you was being homeless again. So he was like, you know, you know what? It, it, as a man, that's how we grow. And in our terrible times, like when I got locked up, it wasn't because what somebody else did. Like it was what I did. But in the course of me being incarcerated, I was learning about myself, the things that, that I was doing before that. I was like, what was I doing before and why? Like I was just, I was just doing it, not even caring if I got caught. I was just like, I'm just gonna do it. I don't even care. And then when I got locked up, it was like, oh, shoot. So now I got time to slow my mind down and say, hey, this terrible thing and adversity was hitting because I was I was dealing with suppressing the fact that I was trying to be a people pleaser. You know, when you're a people pleaser, what's going to end up happening, you're going to find people to be around, but they need to be pleased. So I was just like, man, like I was dealing with that. OK, then I was dealing with the fact that I kept telling myself, even though I was working at a place where everybody knew me, I wasn't enough. So I was telling myself that story. And then I was telling myself the story that, you know, my daddy not been like, I went down a rampage of excuses and things that I did to myself, but I would have never recognized it if I wasn't in a terrible situation to say, Hey, this is what, you know, I did wrong to say, you know what, I need to analyze this because if not, if, if I'm gonna keep suppressing it, something's going to happen to where, like they say, you either gonna be in jail or you're gonna be dead. So I was like, you know what? I'm glad I have my circle. I'm glad I have friends that I can talk to and just say, hey, like sometimes, like we all say, it's good to just bounce off, you know, someone, even if they haven't been through it, they can just say, I understand. And I don't know what it is about when you with someone that you love and you care about, that's a, that, that's a brother of yours, that when he just listen, he can give you a word that will make you identify what you're going through. Like he can say something and you'll be like, you know what? Like, that's what it was. I just couldn't say that's what it was. Cause I didn't know how to, you know? So, and when you, and when you, when you have those moments, you're able to identify, yeah, you know what? Let me go back to my fundamentals. Let me go back to the drawing board because I feel better now. Now I can go back and attack the thing that I need to attack to get myself to the level or where I need to be and where I'm trying to go. So in the terrible moments, man, that's, I think that's when you really find out, you know, a lot of things about yourself that you wouldn't, 
if you just stay high all the time and not talking about smoking weed, I'm just saying like high is and being successful. I had to think about corn, pause. I thought about corn. <laughs> Somebody pick up that heat. <laughs> Somebody pick up that heat. Don't let the flame go out. Uh, I think the um, the biggest thing is, for me, is the transitioning part. So, of course, we've all hit rock bottom, and then we all elevate, elevate it to another level that we're proud of. But I believe it's that transition part where you start to realize who's for you and who's not for you. And I say that because when I was an alcoholic, my phone was constantly blowing up. When I was an alcoholic, people was constantly around me. And it wasn't until I decided to give my life over to God is when people fell off me. So most people think people leave you when you hit rock bottom. No, that's just good company <laughs> when you hit rock bottom because there's a lot of people who are comfortable in rock bottom. But when you decide to get up from rock bottom and say, okay, I got to I gotta do better for myself, that's when you're going to notice the changes. And notice that's when I had to notice who's for me and who's not for me. So there were a lot of people when I decided to change my life over the guy who stopped rocking with me because it was too positive. They stopped rocking with me because it was too influential. So I had to learn, okay, if you're going to better yourself, there's just some people that don't want to come. If you wanna, if you wanna have a better life, there's just some people who don't wanna stop drinking, stop smoking, stop doing all this, that, and the third. So it's the turning point of of making that change and evolving for me is when I decide, when I've noticed, you know, what's for me and what's not for me, who's for me and who's not for me. It's just making that 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 change. A lot of people haven't made up their mind, like me and Corey was talking about, like haven't made up their mind yet. So there are people still stuck around them. But once you decide, okay, I'm doing this then that's when people are going to fall off of you and you'll realize who for you and who not for you. I love that. Um, and I just want to piggyback on that too. A lot of times, y'all, believe it or not, we are responsible for our own demise. A lot of things that we go through, it ain't God, it ain't the enemy, it's us. You know what I'm saying? By Based on the decisions that we make. Now, you got something called um, intrapsychic that you most definitely got to tap into. You know what I'm saying? It can be positive, negative, or it can be neutral. And I think a lot of times, man, an intro psychic is really dealing with yourself internally, what's going on, having a self-understanding of what's happening in your life. And I think when we really begin to reflect, it's when we're in our lowest points of our life. Like Willie was saying, when you're high on top of high, everything is too good for you to even sit down and even figure out what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Everything is too good to even think about what am I suppressing right now? And there's too many men walking around on a high, but they're actually, the foundation is broken. They just learned how to function on a broken foundation. You know what I'm saying? They have learned how to be operable on a foundation that is about to crack any moment and fall from beneath them. So sometimes, man, what we try to do is we try to outwork our problems so we don't have to deal with the real problem. We'll take on this, we'll take on that, we'll do this. And it's, we show everybody how well we're doing, but internally, we're not happy and we're dying. And I can't tell you how many times where I've hit rock bottom or I pissed somebody off or I, I've done something that put me in a, a trouble state. That's when I really begin to focus on myself. Like, Corey, what is it about you that you got to change, man? Because a lot of times we like to point the finger at everybody else and say, well, you're the reason I feel like this. Can't nobody make you feel like nothing. You're responsible for how you feel. God didn't give nobody else control over your emotions. He gave you control over your emotions. Oh, well, uh, you, you make me feel bad. I, uh, self-esteem. It's called self-esteem for a reason. How do you esteem yourself? You see what I'm saying? And so it's like, as men, we do walk around suppressing a lot of things. We try to outwork our problems so we don't have to really deal with the problem. And I'm here to let y'all know if you're listening to this podcast, like, Embrace your troubled moments because it's in your troubled moments when you got to go back to the drawing board and say, what in the hell can I do different? The reason somebody's responding to me is because of my behavior. Your behavior shows people. It shows us. That's why people be like, I don't like that. Or you get in trouble for that. Based on somebody else's response to you, 
And what you do should show you what you're doing ain't right. And then you just got to go back to the drawing board and fix it. But a lot of us don't like change. A lot of us like, well, that's one more thing. I got to focus on myself. You're damn right, because you're better than yourself every single day. But I will say this. If the person that you're around or the person that you're with, if they are asking you to change to the point where you have to alter your DNA, that person is not for you because it's physically impossible to alter your DNA. You can change behaviors, but some people ain't satisfied with the behavior change. They want you to change completely as an individual. And that ain't, that ain't real. That ain't realistic. And it's not fair. So y'all embrace your trouble moments. Um, nobody wants to have them. Nobody wake up and say, damn, this trouble going to be great today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody does that. Yes, right? I got trouble. I got yeah, trouble. Yes, I got trouble <laughs> but if you tap into, again, your interest psyche and say, you know what? What can I learn from this? What can I take away from this? You know what I'm saying? Don't label the person that tells you about yourself. Label the behavior. Mm. What is it about what this person is saying or doing that strike a core with me? Because maybe it's not the person. Maybe it's you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I've been through a lot of uh, troubled times and, and, and I hated them all, but I've learned so much about myself. I learned what I don't like, what I like. I learned what I need to change, what I don't need to change. I learned as if I learn if, if it's me or the other person. There's so much you can learn in your troubled time, man. So embrace it. Yeah, man, that's boy. Whoo, mic drop. Hey, you said some stuff, Corey. You said you, the fact that you said that people are so high, they know how to, you know, function and they dysfunction. And basically, what you're doing is like you're almost like a giraffe. Like you, you being a giraffe to where they're so high, their neck is so tall to where the giraffe can never see what the turtle is doing. Like the giraffe can't see what the turtle is doing unless he put his head down there, you know? So it's just like, like, this, like I'm, I'm just thinking what you was thinking about, Corey. Like we suppress so much. It's like this book bag I got on. Like we just put everything we suppress and just put it in the book bag, put it in the book bag. But then when it's time to deal with it, we can't go in the book bag to deal with what we need to deal with because everything that's in there is stuff we suppress. So I mean, you ain't got nothing good in there at all. So I'm just like, man, like you got to get to the point to where you say, hey, like Corey said, you like deal with those things in a place that's that when you in discomfort to be comfortable and not be comfortable to be complacent. It's just like, you know what? I, I got to deal with the fact that, you know, like I, like I told Corey the other night, I was like, you know what? I had to be real with myself. Like I had to be, I honestly, I had to say it even though I was thinking it. I, I said, I said, man, Corey, so you know what? And Corey, I tell you, I was like, man, I've been, I've been slacking on my job. Like, like I've been slacking on my job, and it was almost like a domino effect because I telework, and even though I telework, I was taking advantage of the teleworking. Meaning, like, I was supposed to be actually like driving, going to work, and stuff like that. It was like, okay, I was just calling people and be like, everything good, all right, and just stayed at the house. I was like, man, you know what, I'm. I'm almost being a hypocrite, but I'm like bucking the system and still getting a check when I can just do what I got to do and still get the check. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I was, I was, I was sabotaging myself, man. I was just like, you know what? I got to deal with that because it was a domino effect because even though I still would work out, there was other things I wasn't doing. It was other things I was just like, man, it started to be a domino effect. Like the past weekend, like I was telling Corey, like, I just want to just be at the house. Like, I didn't want to go nowhere. Like, I just wanted to stay at home Saturday and Sunday because all week I had been going places. But then I was like, my wife, she the opposite. She been at work, ain't getting home till like 8 o'clock, 8.30. And then come the weekends, she wanted to like do everything. I'm like, hey, look, I, I want to just sit in the house. You take the kids and y'all go places. I just want to sit in the house. So I was just like, you know what? I had to deal with that. And I did, it wasn't until I spoke about it to say, hey, I wasn't speaking. I was speaking life to myself by able to just say it. I think some people just need to say it and stop just, you know, holding it and picking on something else to do. And as men, I know we good at that. Like when I had a job and I was dealing with stuff, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere where I want it. So I'm gonna stay at work. I'm gonna stay at work longer because when I go home, I don't feel wanted. So I, I, instead of me talking about it and saying what I'm feeling, I'm gonna stay at work 
and spend more time there because I'm, I'm seeing that I'm appreciated at work than I am at home. But it was until I spoke about it, because I mean, I'm being, I'm being honest. I was at at and and I was working. Like, it was so much easier to be there because I was able to entertain other people and not deal with the fact that when I go home, I don't get the same satisfaction. When I can make the same satisfaction by doing the same thing I'm doing at work, which was talking. So I was just like, you know what? Got it. I got to do that thing. And the only way I had to realize that was I had to say it, like speak life into yourself and be able to say it. And in those moments, that's what you got to do. Like, like Will said, you got to look in the mirror. It ain't like we can, we can encourage him. We can pump him up. We can hype, hype, hype him up. Like we can do all that. But until we actually get off the phone and say, hey, you need to focus on this right here because you stop focusing on it and why? So, I mean, that's, man, I think a terrible times for me, man, is just when you find the best things. Like I said, most people find their they best self in their in they, in they worst moments. Yeah, for me, I always think I get through my troubled times because of my troubled times. Hey, yo, say it again. I get through my troubled times because of my troubled times. And I say that because whatever I'm dealing with now, I've always had it worse before. So, so many people go through life and they say, how am I gonna make it out of this one? What am I gonna do this time? And you've been through this cycle over and over and over again, and you've made it through over and over and over again. And the problems that you're having, it's not life-threatening problems, they're lifestyle changing problems. So it's not life or death for you right now. So when I look at it, I, I think about the problems like, okay, I had a bad day today. Okay, when I was a kid, I had to go visit my dad in prison while another person's daddy was playing basketball with them in the driveway. I've had it bad before. I've spent my money on alcohol instead of food when I got down to my last three or four dollars and got the steel reserve instead of going to get a burger because I love, I've, I've had it bad before. So what? I might be a few dollars short. I've had times where I had three bills due and I had $100 in my bank account because I went to spend it on alcohol. So what? I've made it through. So, so many people, you get so frustrated over something so small when you really think about it because you've made it through worse before. So I make it through my trying times because I made it through trying times. So in order to keep going, I have to remember I had it worse. Heck, my mama had it worse. She was raising two kids with no father and, and she was on food stamps trying to make her own way at 18, 19 years old. We made it through that. I've seen eviction notices. I've seen past due bills. I've seen the same meal three, four times oh, oh, in, in a week because money got low. I've seen all of this. So what are you complaining about what you have now? Because maybe the cable might get cut off. Do you really need cable? Do you really need Wi-Fi? You so worried about the car breaking down, somebody ain't even got a car. And you stressing over going to buy a new battery for your car, be happy that you were in a position to be, to be frustrated about something that other people don't have. There's a millionaire right now stressed out because he can't go to his beach house because of COVID, what? You're in a position to be stressed out about something so lovely that other people would love to have. So you made it through trying times because of your trying times. And that's what's gonna build you over and over and over again. So the bad day I had today is gonna pre pre better prepare me for tomorrow. Ooh. Hey, yo, say it again. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. <laughs> hey, hey, let's go. Hey, one thing I am gonna say, well, I'm gonna say two things. First thing is, uh, I heard this from Mufasa, Mufasa from uh, ETA, ETA, and he said, uh, don't complain about the plate that you have when your whole goal was to eat in the first place. <laughs> yeah, let me say that again. Don't complain about the plate that you have. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. <laughs> when, you're, when the goal was to eat in the first place, man. you know, sometimes most individuals don't eat because, you know what I'm saying, Matre? They're not able to self-access. They're not. 
they 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 have this mentality where it's just like you know what whoa it's me i always tell people cry if you must crawl whatever you got to do but after that what's next because at the end of the day you can cry all you want at the end of the day you can complain you can pout all you want but after that what are you going to do about the situation that you're in you want to keep crying about it or are you going to allow this trouble and time to develop you to the person that you need to be and for me personally um I had to, you know, hear some things that I did not want to hear. And sometimes it's the things that you don't want to hear that's going to make you a more phenomenal husband. It's going to make you a better father, right? So something, sometimes, some, I hate when people are like, yo, I got haters. Some of y'all don't got haters. Some of you got people who just tell you the truth. <laughs> They're just telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, your lighting's bad. And then you get offended. No. Don't go into defense mode, get into development mode. Start saying to yourself, what is it that I need to do to be a better father, better husband, better leader in general? And I promise you, um, as we all are leaders, sometimes it's a difficult, difficult journey and it's enjoyable. It has its ups and downs. But one thing that I know for sure is that don't forget you in the process of doing you. Let me say that again. Don't forget you in the process of doing you. And know that it's okay to vent. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be in a place where you're at. And we always say it's okay not to be okay. But at the end of the day, if you're not at 100%, you're no good for nobody else. And what you do is going to bleed into everybody else's life. So, yeah, I see you, Shaquan. Go ahead, man. You better not talk about no LeBron either, dog. Go ahead, man. Hey, man, y'all not ready to have that LeBron James conversation, man. I keep telling you that. But, um... Nah, I mean, uh, I mean to be honest with you, um, this might sound crazy, but I I love hitting rock bottom. Can't can't cope it up. So if if you broke, you can't get no broken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love being at the bottom because I mean you can only go up, but that's why uh, you you look at football, right? You take you take football most of the time. At halftime, the team that's losing, you make adjustments, right? Most of the time, that's too late. That's why I love baseball. Baseball, a pitcher and a batter makes adjustments each bat. So each time they go up to the plate, they got to make an adjustment. Each diff- Every batter that the pitcher faced got to make an adjustment. So every situation that you face in life, you got to make an adjustment. If you don't make an adjustment, you just go keep doing the same thing over and over. Hey, but you said something, um, but you went a different route was you said how, you know, you you was going into sports. And one thing you notice about sports, let's take like the Cleveland Browns years ago, right? They had won zero games. I think they won like their last game and they celebrated winning their last game. And somebody like the New England Patriots then would have looked at them like they were crazy because they might have lost one game during the season. So they're celebrating one win from another team that's not happy with one loss. So when you hit rock bottom, there's just certain certain accomplishments that you make that you're happy with. You have to realize what level you're on. You have to realize where you're at in your life. So for you, an accomplishment may be just starting. The accomplishment may just be going a week with doing this. Your accomplishment may just be separating yourself from this one person. No, you might not have made a million dollars. No, you might not have a million followers. No, you're not on that level, but you can celebrate moving beyond rock bottom. That's that's okay. That's okay. And, and Coach Will said something about self-assessment. Everybody knows that works that works. When that audit comes around, that audit or they say the manager's here, them people here, y'all know them people when you at work. Those when everybody go around, make sure everything tidied up, make sure everything's uh, clean, make sure everything's where they're supposed to be. And a lot of people, you need to audit yourself to realize what needs to be tightened up on me. What do I need to do to make sure I'm better prepared? Because everything that you do is going to be based on who you are and how you look at yourself in the mirror every day. Yeah, that's a fact. Like for me, um, y'all know how many times I say, and I'm, yo, I'm, I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm, I'm just being real. Y'all know how many times I thank God 
that yo, it's been a week since I watched porn. Like, I'm just, I'm just being honest. I mean, I know, like, I, I got on Facebook today and seen somebody was like, yo, 130 days sober, dope. For me, it's been a week that I ain't watched porn. Because what happens is I see something on Twitter and it triggers, Quan, you could go watch that. Because it's, it's right there in your phone. Bruh, that right there? That, true, true, true transparency. And you know what? Here's the funny thing, bro. I, I, and that's why, like, I rock with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And the average person would be like, well, what do you mean? What? And you want this podcast? Yeah, he's on his podcast. Because at least pe- at least we're able to admit things that we do. Some of y'all are just good at hiding. it. Mm. Let's just be real. Let's call it what it is. Like, I don't care how Christianese you are or how much scripture you read. At some point, you're going to be tested. At some point, you're going to have to actually live that word. And I promise you, there's not one perfect person, Shaquan. And I promise you, bro, there was times I'm on that level too. I promise you, we all go through our go-through. For some per- for somebody, it probably may be uh, cheating. That may be an addiction to them. Or it may be drinking. Or it may be smoking. And somebody may be like, you know what? I had three days without a drink. I did good. It's the small things that you need to be able to say to yourself, mm-hmm. I did that. And here's the thing that I want you to also understand, fam. By saying that, think about the individual. And I say this all the time, Corey. Think about the individual who don't even who wakes up in the morning and doesn't even say thank you, God. Mm-hmm. But here we are as people of God, and we're like, oh, I watched pornography. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. Oh, my God, a thought crossed my head. But yet you wake up every morning and you do your best to live your best. Nobody said this, this journey won't be perfect. Nobody said that this journey is supposed to be, you know, leading you, you know what I'm saying, perfect every single day. But this is what I need you to understand that all y'all that listen to this, my dog just said a week. That's an accomplishment for him. Some of y'all do it every day and you ain't every even day. enough to admit what he said. Every day. Let's be Hey, honest. hey, hey, bro, I'm... Like I said, I ain't gonna hold you. It be times where I'm at home by myself. It is I, like I just hear hey, where the laptop at? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Where the laptop at? Where the laptop at? I'm gonna get it. <laughs> hey, bro. I, hey, no, real. Hey, look. Like I said, I ain't gonna hold you. I be at the crib by myself, and I just hear a voice say, "Yo, you know you can watch porn right now." I'm like, "Word." <laughs> hey, look. I'm be honest. Sometimes yeah. I catch the thoughts. Sometimes yeah. I don't. <laughs> You know, sometimes I catch it and be like, nah, can't do it. Other times I'd be like, you know what? I can. Ain't nobody else here. <laughs> but look, but the, the thing is, is people that would judge me for saying that is because they live Instagram lives. If you go look at everybody's Instagram, it's all the good, but they hide the bad. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm I'm the opposite. I give you my bad. Yeah. Hey, let me say this too. Some some people that I listen to this got a fake account. They Ooh. own life. They, they got, got a fence. <laughs> they own life. <laughs> you feel me, Shaquan? They like, yo, I don't do that. That's disgusting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. But yet, but yet you twerking. But yet you twerking. Go ahead, go ahead. Get him, cool. no, get him, cool. no, no. I'm, I'm going to jump on this other call. But uh, right. what I was uh, going to say. No, 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 I do. Because I, I, I already set this appointment up. Uh, I what, you, I saying, what, what I was going to say, what I was going to say was that uh, a lot of <laughs> <laughs> I know I love what Shaquan was saying, man, because a lot of times we try to, and I'm going to be honest, man, a lot of times we try to change for God and we don't really want to change for ourselves. And so a lot of things that we want to stop doing, you know what I'm saying? That's for real. Like we put more emphasis on trying to change for God because somebody said porn was wrong. Somebody told you, Shaquan, but somebody told us that pornography was wrong at some point in our life. Probably came from the church world because anybody else really else talking like that, right? And so what happens is we fight this internal battle within ourselves to say, you know what, because somebody told me this was wrong, I'm trying to please God, then, you know, I'm going to try my best to stop. But the thing is, we really don't want to stop what we're doing because we enjoy the entertainment. I'm going to keep it a a whole thousand with y'all, and I ain't even justifying for nobody. Pornography is a form of entertainment, just like Ratchet TV is a form of entertainment for women. They don't have a problem doing it or watching it. It's just the form of entertainment that you chose, most people ain't fond of it. Right? Mm. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. But what I'm saying is, 
you can't change for God if you ain't willing to change for yourself. And to be honest, you want you want better for yourself just as much as God want better for you. But it has to start with you first. I, I can't change for my wife if I'm not willing to change for myself first. I'm going to fight a mental battle every single time and I'm going to lose because internally I really don't want to change. I'm just trying to do it to please somebody else. And that's what a lot of our battles are. Mm -hmm. And I want to go with to my Trey said, he said he had a bad day. My philosophy is this, man. I don't believe people have bad days. I believe they have bad moments that they moments. turn yeah. out into days. They, they, they drag them in, into their days, right? Because we won't have a moment and deal with a moment. We'll have a moment and we'll drag it out all day. It's like, don't allow a moment of your life, whether it be 30 minutes, five uh, an hour, affect the other 18 hours of your day. Because it's not that deep. You see what I'm saying? Be mature enough to deal with the moment in the moment and get out of it and keep living your best life. But sometimes we want to drag it out because we want somebody to say, oh, what's wrong with you? Mm. We know how we do. We know how we do it. We, we, we try to manipulate people all the time. Well, what's it wrong with you? still won't tell them. It still, still won't, won't tell them. them. Still and then you'll end up beefing, you'll beef with these people because somebody pissed off you. And it's like, man, if it don't affect you in the next year or two, dragging it out so deep. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that we can, you know, fix within ourselves. And I'm going to say this. Trouble is seasonal. And trouble is also based on your perspective. It's like everybody goes through something in life. Everybody. And you ain't the first to go through it. But the problem that we have is this. Because I believe trouble, every level of trouble, supposedly supposed to make you dig deeper within yourself. Because if you keep hitting the same trouble and you don't never dig it any deeper, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, where's the growth? So when you're troubled, at, it sh the trouble should make you go deeper every time you're faced with something. And the reason, and all, all only thing that happens is we go into a panic because we ain't never dealt with it before. Mm -hmm. But when you really sit down and think about it, hell, this trouble ain't really all that bad. But because it's new to you and you've never faced it before, you go into a panic and a panic is worse than what you're really dealing with. Yeah. And so it's like, come on, man. We, but it's all about knowing yourself and studying yourself. But that's what I, that's all I have to say. Yeah, that was that was big, man. Yeah, I was thinking about what um, what Trey said about the edit, about the auditing. I mean, it's funny because that's what I do when I go into businesses. Like, I have the authority to shut them down if they aren't working on their business. You won't and be like, doing that. If you keep. Uh, Making them phone calls from home and not doing exactly exactly. <laughs> so, so that's what I was saying. So that's what I was saying. I, I was like, man, like I'm messing up. I'm messing up other people's businesses by me staying at home and not going to these warehouses and doing inspections because somebody else can do an inspection and be like, who area this is? And now it's on me because I'm like, I ain't go to the area. You know what I'm saying? I look at the inspection just as as well as life is like. If they don't do the bug search, if they don't do love you, bro. If they don't do the bug search. If they don't do, if they don't change out the the fire, the fire extinguishers, and they don't fix the leaks, and they don't fix the lights, like I could be messing up millions of dollars because people, equipment, and furniture is in these warehouses. So me not analyzing and saying, hey, I need to stop slacking. I was causing other people that was connected to what I'm doing to also slack and probably be at a loss because I haven't identified what I needed to deal with. So now I identify what I needed to deal with. Now I can go out and do the thing I need to be doing to help other people. And that's what it is. Like, I know people, people always say this. They're like, I don't want to bleed on anybody. No, I didn't work on myself. You know, and you can easily do that. But some people are, are here to help you. Like, I, I can be somebody ambulance and help them stitch up something that, that need to be stitching. But I can't do that if they don't even call and get help. Like, that's my job. If my job is to come help somebody in a time of need and you don't even, like like Corey said, there's sometimes we we act out, we slam doors, we do stuff for somebody to ask, man, what's wrong with you? And then as soon as they ask, that's our opportunity to say it. We still don't say it. We just keep acting out. Which means you still haven't dealt with the issue at hand that you needed to to be able to say, hey, like this is what this is what I really got going on. 
And like, and that was big of you, Quan, to say that, man, because we all at, at some point deal with it. It may not be today. Like, my, my turn may not be today. It may be a month from now. When I hit my low, it may be like, man, nobody here. You know, and, and, and but but it's because it's multiple forms. It don't have to be, you know, like yours can be. They got to be completely naked. Mine can be like they just got a thong on. I'm like, oh, like <laughs> you know, that's just that that can be mine. Like everybody, porn is is you know, like there's no there's no um no guideline to what porn is. Like if I entertain it and watch it for so long, like I say in the Bible, it says if you think about it, you've already done it. So if I think about it, I might as well just. <laughs> I'm just saying, get in there, like you know. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, but no, man, I, I, I just, I truly believe, man. Like when you find out in those terrible moments, to embrace them, to handle them, to get to the point to where you know that, like life, is so much better, dealing with those issues that you don't want to deal with because like I said, y'all know this mind is very emotional, man, dealing with, you know, breast cancer and watching my, my mom, my sisters and my niece. And man, I'm telling you, it was like in those moments, they dealt with what was in front of them, not what's behind them on the side. It was like, this was in front of them and they dealt with it to say, I'm going to beat this no matter what it takes, because if I don't, I'm going to die. And I think we have to, we have to tell ourselves that, like give yourself a scare tactic to where if I don't work on this, I am going to die, mm. period. Mm. Like if you don't, if you don't tell yourself that you, you are going to, you are going in some form and some type of way. If you don't deal with it, you are going to die. So that's my take, man. Yeah. I mean, that's good. You know, LeBron's the champion. You know, congrats to LeBron James. You know, got to, got to, got to give credit where credit's due. Congratulations. Uh, and uh, shout out to the Mamba. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Mamba. Congratulations, Sue Bird, as well. Can't hey. Ladies. Yeah. How about that? How about them Seattle Storms, baby? Brianna Stewart, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Beg, I'm, I'm, I'm highly disappointed in you. I you gotta know? give it up for Sue. You are you. I'm, I'm disappointed. Man. You are a UConn fan. You should give props to Sue Birds. That's a four championship. You, you can you love Candace Parker. I can't believe. I it. do love Candace, but Sue Bird is, is, is killing it. Man, Sue Bird's the goat, man. She like the Steve Nash of the women basketball, bro. Shoot. But Steve Nash ain't winning rings. Yeah, I know. But he did steal some MVPs from Kobe. But we ain't gonna talk about that. We, yeah, we ain't gonna do that. But uh, listen, man. Anybody got a legacy, Jim? Willie on fire tonight. Willie, take it. <laughs> Come on, uh, KCP. Hey, man. Look, I just. Uh, I just say, man, stop. So <laughs> I don't know why I just thought about Quan just then. Um, oh, what? Pause, <laughs> pause, yeah, pause. So I, I just, just, just want to say, man. Uh, I don't even want to say that. I'm saying, forget it. Stop playing with yourself. Be real with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No, see, I knew that. No. Yeah, man. See, stop playing with yourself. Be real with yourself and own up to what you got to deal with and don't quit. Yeah. If you quit, you're going to yeah. die. Period. Yeah. Hey, man, you started off like KCP. You Danny uh, Green now. Man, <laughs> hey, that's fine. I make my free throws. <laughs> nah, that was good, though. You know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wow. with y'all, man. I can't take y'all no more. Hey, that, that's the name of this episode. Stop playing with yourself. Stop playing with yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know, Stop man. playing with yourself. It's the squad letting you know. <laughs> Stop playing with yourself. Out, hey, show it again. Show it again. That's the name. That's the new. Hey, that's it. That's us. That's us, baby. Yeah. That's, that's us. Appreciate y'all. Yes, <laughs> sir. We see you when y'all see y'all. Peace.
Peace.